Good morning, friends. Welcome to worship on this beautiful winter morning. So glad you're here. So glad you're joining us online. We welcome you. If you are visiting with us, of course, we offer you a special welcome. Hope you will make yourself known to us so that we can welcome you properly. There should be a connection card in your bulletin. Please fill that out, especially give us an email address. That's the way we communicate all that is going on here at Grace Church. So we would love to have that, and we would love to get to know you better. Uh, many opportunities for a learning and service on the back, so take a look at those as well. You know, the last thing Jesus said before he ascended into heaven was this. I am with you always, even to the close of the age. Let's prepare our hearts for worship.
Thank you, ringers. Stand with me as we are called into worship this morning. Walking with Christ is the journey of faith. We may not see a clear path in front of us. We likely won't have answers to the why questions. Walking with Christ is our journey of faith. We look for evidences of God's power and love. And we are bold to sing a resurrection song, for Christ is risen. He is risen I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met Call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of. Your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old day knew. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you call my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, I need. Rescue, my sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was in north. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now you're You may be seated. We are safe confessing our mistakes 
since we do not have a great high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but was tempted as we are, yet without sin. So let us then boldly confess so that we may receive mercy and forgiveness. We pray together using the prayer in the bulletin. Let's pray. Holy God, we are Easter people, people of hope and resurrection, but many days still seem like Good Friday. We feel stuck in pain and loss, fear and anxiety, worry and doubt. Resurrection power seems to be in short supply, and we are not sure how your power impacts the difficulties and suffering we face today. Forgive us and renew us again, dear friend. Come alongside us and speak words of grace and truth to us. Open our eyes to your constant presence and remind us that you are always working out your redemptive purposes in our lives and in our world by the power of your spirit and through the love in Christ Jesus our Lord. In these quiet, holy moments, tell God how you have not looked for or walked with Jesus in your life. Amen. There are benefits of being in a relationship with God, who forgives all our sin, heals all our diseases, redeems our lives from the pit, crowns us with steadfast love and mercy, and satisfies us with good as long as we live. So believe this good news. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We share Christ's peace because we all need it. We really need it. So before sitting, share this peace with your neighbor saying, the peace of the risen Christ be with you. Bye. 
Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may receive with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Now on that same day, that's the day that Jesus rose from the dead, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us. Because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening the scriptures to us, that same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how we had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. One of my favorite childhood memories is walking and talking with my grandfather. When I was tiny and my father was stationed in the Philippines fighting the war in Vietnam, my mom and I lived with my grandparents in Jackson, Mississippi. Granddaddy took me to the Jackson Zoo every single day. He carried me around. He told me about all the animals, which I'm sure is why I'm such an over-the-top animal lover today. As I got older and we no longer lived with them, we visited every summer, and Granddaddy and I would take a walk together after dinner. As we walked, we talked about a range of topics from trees and food to politics and history. We talked about my school. We talked about his son who died in the war. We talked about our hopes and dreams from the important to the mundane, it helped to talk it out with someone I loved. Things became clearer when I did. Right before I left San Diego, I finished the Five Peak Challenge, the five mountain hikes located in Mission Trails Regional Park. It was quite a challenge for me, especially the last two peaks. You see, you must climb them at the same time. 
To get to the Piles Trailhead, you have to climb over Cowles Mountain to start the climb to Piles and then back down Piles and back over Cowles to get back to your car. 19,851 steps, 9.2 miles, 107 floors climbed that Saturday, according to my iPhone. This beautiful hike gave Jack and I the chance to talk. We talked about our children. We talked about God's calling on our lives. We talked about our feelings about moving back to Texas. For four hours, we talked and walked. Things became much clearer. And the secret to finishing that challenging hike for me was a companion along the way to talk with me, to listen to me, to encourage me. Friends were walking home together on the first Easter afternoon in our gospel reading for today. A little over a week ago, they were part of a crowd shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the son of David. But things change quickly. Their friend and Jesus had been unjustly condemned, was crucified, dead, and buried. It was more than they could bear. So they embark Sunday afternoon on the seven-mile hike home to Emmaus and talk about it all. They don't know it at first, but they are walking with Jesus. Wouldn't that be wonderful to be able to walk and talk with Jesus? We can. Jesus is alive and has promised to be with us on this journey of life every single day, every step of the way. But Tracy, you may argue... Jesus has ascended into heaven and sits at God's mighty right hand. How can we walk with him? Well, I believe it's the same for us as it was those disciples, Cleopas and Roger, on the walk to Emmaus. The Bible, of course, doesn't name the second disciple. I just always call him Roger. I notice in this story several ways they walk with Jesus that we can too. First, we are walking with Jesus when we are in Christian community. Yes, our relationship with Jesus is individual and personal, but it is not meant to be private. It's meant to be shared. When we believe in Jesus, we become a part of his body, the church, and we need each other. It is said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I ask in every session meeting, where have you seen God at work this month? Everyone has an answer from something small, normally, to occasionally something big and miraculous. This is an important exercise for at least two reasons. First, it makes us look at our lives and remember and be encouraged when we see God working. Secondly, hearing someone else's God someone else's God moments allows me to see God better myself. It also reminds me that we are all in this together, and we are. Just this week, one of you helped me tremendously by sharing food, another by driving Jack to the ophthalmologist. Many of you prayed and checked in. Thank you, dear friends. Thank you. That's what Christian community is all about. Remember, Jesus sent out the disciples two by two because we're better together. Jesus promised to be wherever two or three are gathered in his name. It is said the way is long and we should go together. The way is difficult. We must help each other. The way is joyful and we must share it. We walk this pilgrim journey hand in hand with each other and with him. We're walking with Jesus when we talk to him. That's all prayer is, talking to Jesus, telling him what is going on in our lives, and then listening for his love. 
I love how Jesus joins Cleopas and Roger on the road and breaks into their conversation. What are y'all talking about, he asks. Are you the only one who doesn't know what happened in Jerusalem, they answer back. And so they pour out the whole sad story to him. They tell him honestly what happened. And of course, Jesus already knows, but in the telling and the talking and the listening, a relationship is formed. Prayer is like having a date with God, Thomas Keating writes. Regular periods of prayer let us get acquainted with the risen Christ. You know, Jesus asks us as well, what things? And we're invited to share them. The things that have hurt or disappointed or confused us. Tell Jesus if you're sick or hurting physically, emotionally, or spiritually. Tell Jesus when you're worried about someone else. Tell him if you have money concerns or family problems. Tell him if you have anxiety or trouble sleeping. Tell Jesus if you don't know what to do. Tell Jesus if all the violence in the world has you afraid or discouraged. Tell Jesus if you're exhausted from too much to do or you need something purposeful to do. Test him and see if he will not help and heal and comfort. We're walking with Jesus when we read the scriptures. Jesus explained the scriptures to them. Now the scriptures are a powerful vehicle for revealing Jesus to us. They are the spectacles, Calvin wrote, that help us see Jesus more clearly. They guide and strengthen those who know him. The stories and promises contained in them by the power of the Spirit convict, challenge, comfort, and inspire us. They put our current experience into the larger context of God's salvation story. Cleopas and Roger reported that their hearts were burning while Jesus opened the scriptures to them. Haven't you ever read something in the Bible that suddenly, just like in the cartoons, a light bulb appears over your head? I have. I've read passages I've read a hundred times and then all of a sudden, those words communicate to me what God was up to, gave me peace, slapped me in the face to shape up, or gave me heartburn. Jesus promises to walk with us as we read God's word to us. I know Bible reading doesn't sound like a very sexy hobby, but it will send you on an adventure like never before. You will not come away the same. We're walking with Jesus when we invite him to stay with us. When it looked like Jesus was going on ahead without them, the disciples urged Jesus to stay. Cynthia Jarvis points out, Jesus leaves them free to continue without him. His love is such that we're always free to turn our backs to close the door of our hearts against him, to bold our minds shut in fear of what inviting him in might involve. Jesus is a gentleman. He stands at the door and knocks. He will not barge in, but if we hear his voice and open the door, he will come in. So invite Jesus into your school or workplace. Invite him into your home and your marriage and your extended family relationships. Invite Jesus into your neighborhood and any other community of which you are a part. Invite Jesus into our church. Urge him to stay with us. He wants to. And finally, we're walking with Jesus when we come to the table. It's when he was at table with them that their eyes were opened and they recognized him. You know, Jesus somehow becomes the host of every meal he attends. And he follows the same ritual 
every single time in the Gospels. He gives thanks, he breaks bread, and he offers it to them. The Gospels in the book of Acts are full of shared meals. And aren't you thankful that eating is such a big part of our faith? These meals must be important, not just for physical sustenance, but spiritual sustenance as well. Jesus still visits at mealtimes, remaining the host of every meal. Christ is found in our companions, the ones we eat bread with. That's what the word companion literally means, our with bread person. It's in saying the blessing and breaking the bread with one another that Jesus is celebrated and his resurrection presence is experienced. In sharing that meal together, Maundy Thirsty, did you not sense Christ with us all? I did. The reason these five things are central to Christian practice and have been since the beginning are because they allow us to experience the presence of the risen Christ. They facilitate our walk with Jesus. And it may not be important to you on ordinary days or forgotten by me on ordinary days. But one day, we will find his presence critical, indispensable. My friend Lena was diagnosed with lung cancer. And you know, there's nothing scarier than not being able to breathe. And when I saw her during one stint in the hospital after her children had left, she admitted that even on oxygen, she could not catch her breath. And she was scared. Now, Lena was a woman of great faith. She regularly and enthusiastically participated in Christian community. She talked with Jesus. She read and studied the scriptures. She invited Jesus into every aspect of her life. And she dined at the Lord's table frequently. So I didn't have to convince her. I just reminded her that Jesus was with her every step of the way, before her, behind her, beside her that she was never alone. We listened to the Chris Tomlin song, Whom Shall I Fear, together, singing along. I know who goes before me. I know who stands beside. The God of angel armies is always by my side. When I went to see Lena the next day, she told me, That when she got up to the bathroom in the middle of the night, she didn't know if she could make it even the few feet across her hospital room. She started to shake and weep. And then all of a sudden, she felt a hand around her arm. She couldn't see this hand, but there is no doubt she felt it. A steady hand, a loving hand. A helping hand, a calming hand. She knew it was Jesus. She had a newfound peace that night that took her all the way to her passing from this life a few weeks later. My dear companions on this journey, The promise of God is not that we won't have difficulty or trouble or heartache. The promise of God in Jesus Christ is that he will always be with us, even to the close of the age. We have a companion who invites us to walk with him and talk with him and eat with him and receive his encouragement when the journey is long. And the mountains are high. You know, things become much clearer when we do. We're filled with love and joy 
and a peace that passes all understanding. Mysteriously and miraculously at times, even though we cannot see him with physical eyes, we know he is here. We walk by faith, not by sight. If you can't see Jesus, can't feel him, don't recognize him walking with you, try the things in this story. Get involved in a Christian community. Talk to him. Read the stories about him. Invite him to stay with you. He is as close as the whisper of his name. Jesus comes along beside us all today, smiling his big smile. He's walking with us. Are we wise enough and bold enough to walk and talk with him for the rest of our lives. Amen. When the disciples broke bread, their eyes were opened to see that the stranger they had invited for dinner was none other than their friend, Jesus. Today, as we break bread, open your eyes. The person next to you is none other than our friend, Jesus. Jesus, we, we thank, thank you for inviting us to meet you at this table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, creator and ruler of the universe. At your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. Your hand formed us from the dust of the earth and set us among all your creatures to love and serve you. When we were unfaithful to you, you kept faith with us. When we were slaves in Egypt, you broke the bonds of our oppression, brought us through the sea to freedom, and made covenant to be our God. By a pillar of fire, you led us through the desert to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. You spoke of love and justice in the prophets, and in the word made flesh, you lived among us, manifesting your glory. He died that we might live and is risen to raise us to new life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to save us. He came with healing in his touch and was wounded for our sins. He came with mercy in his voice and was mocked as one despised. He came with peace in his heart and met with violence and death. By your power, he broke free from the prison of the tomb and at his command, the gates of hell were opened. The one who was dead now lives. The one who humbled himself is raised to rule over all creation, the lamb upon the throne. The one ascended on high is with us always as he promised. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again.
Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Nourished at this table, O God, may we know Christ's redemptive love and live a new life in him. Give us who are fed at his hand grace to share our bread with the hungry and with the hungry of heart. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory. And we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. On the night before he died, the Lord Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant shed by my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do proclaim a risen Lord's saving grace. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will the servers please come forward? table is ready. Come and be filled. Let's pray. 
Gracious God, thank you for this feast. You lay a table for us in the face of all our enemies. You feed us with the bread of life and quench our thirst with the wine of gladness. You nourish us with your presence and renew our hope in, in your future. All thanks and praise to you, O God, giver of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd now like to invite Lori Neeland forward for a moment for mission to share about a new opportunity at Grace. Good morning, Grace family. Hi. Um, I'm going to let y'all in on a little secret. I'm here for the moment of mission. It's one of my favorite parts of the service because I always like to hear what's going on in the life of Grace and how to get involved. Um, just between you and me, and it doesn't leave this room, I have finally reached the age that I could join Spice of Life Senior Community. Um, it, it could happen. I mean, they do amazing events and just fantastic, legendary lunches that I've heard of, um, but I have not been able to attend. However, I work full time, so I can't join those events that are happening during the day. So Spice of Life is not my group, my Christian community that she spoke of earlier. That's not my group yet. Yet. Now, Pastor Wilson has been talking for ages about this young adult ministry, and it sounds awesome. Absolutely awesome. Pickle and chicken, chicken and pickle, I don't know what that is, but I want to know what that is. That sounds awesome. I want to go. However, I don't quite fit the young adult ministry. I'm not, that's not my group either. Where is my Christian community? Who's, who's here in the middle? I'm looking for my middle people. Come on, middle people. Well, I was sitting with Ann Bowles, Liz Barth, Laura, uh, Laura Jones, and we were talking, where's our middle community? Uh, how do we get out on a, it's still considered a school night for us. Um, I want to go out on a school night, but not so late that I can't get up and go to work to the next day. So we were talking, and we wanted to start a Wednesday night women's group. Now, we're not married to Wednesday night, but we're going to start with Wednesday night women's group. And we're going to meet on Wednesday, May 10th, at Taverna Rosa, right up the street, from 5 to 7. It's a come-and-go event, so if you need to get to, I heard, Sanctuary Choir, they're, they're not just awesome automatically. They have to practice on Wednesday nights. I didn't know that. Um, so, Wednesday night, May 10th, Taverna Rosa, from 5 to 7. Come join us for, um, come to the table. Come join us for a meal. We'll have some like happy hour flatbeds, breads and stuff like that. And let's talk about what we're looking for in a women's community here at Grace Presbyterian Church. If you are interested, it is on your, on your connection card. Please check it. Make sure your email is up to date and your phone number is up to date. And we will get back in touch with you. And we are going to have an amazing community. We're going to build it. Let's breathe some life right back into um, the uh, life of grace. Okay, guys? I will see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lori. We have many opportunities to learn and serve at Grace Presbyterian Church. Uh, first, we would like to thank Property Workday volunteers who yesterday helped weed and garden and get the outside of our building ready for the fellowship conference in a little over a week from now. We have some incredible volunteers at Grace PC, and we couldn't do what we do without you, so thank you. Maybe you're asking yourself, how can I get involved? How can I volunteer? I'd love to be thanked during worship for my service for good in the world and the life of the church. Well, here's another opportunity. Since we are hosting the National Gathering of the Fellowship Community at Grace this year from May 2nd to May 4th, we are still in need of volunteers to help with setup and takedown. Folks who can move tables and chairs and help to do the things to get our property ready for the conference on Monday night and then again uh, for worship the following Sunday after the conclusion of the conference. If you are interested in volunteering in this capacity, you may either check your connection card or reach out to Chris Turner at chris at gracepc.org. 
Finally, last week we welcomed four new members at Grace Presbyterian Church. Donna Jones, who I believe is here in, in this service, if you raise your hand, but there she is. Um, and uh, Brian Brockman and Larry and Diane Norris. Um, if you see them, introduce yourself, say hello, um, and welcome the newest members of Grace Presbyterian Church. Welcome them into our community. Um, we are so thankful to have them with us here at Grace PC. We are living, breathing messages of God's love for the world. And part of this message is communicated through our generosity. Our generosity communicates to the world our hope, our desires, and our faith. Let us give in gratitude and praise God for all God has given us. This morning's off. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His praise. A thousand songs are not enough to say how great Let us pray. Faithful God, you put your gifts in our hands for such a time as this. Bless the gifts we commit to your work today for the relief and the deliverance of your people. Let these gifts be signs and instruments of your faithfulness to all who will be blessed by them. 
We pray this in your loving name. Amen. Now unto the God who is with us every step of the way, be all honor and glory and power, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us always. Amen.